So I'm Takaoki from Waseda University. And uh, in, in this project, uh, we are aiming to develop a novel quantum computing hardware uh, based on our unique technologies of uh, cavity QED using uh, optical nanofibers. So these are the PIs of our project. Uh, myself from Waseda University and uh, Goban-san from uh, Nanofiber Quantum Technologies, NanoQD, uh, which is a, a quantum hardware uh, startup uh, founded last year, and Tokunaga-san from a NTT, and Inaba-san from AIST. So uh, we promote this project under the uh, strong collaboration of these organizations uh, from uh, academia and the industry, and also uh, from uh, National Lab. So let me uh, start from the background of this project, and this is also the background of the whole uh, Moonshot Gold 6. Uh, so that's toward the uh, uh, realization of four triumphant uh, universal quantum computer. So um, currently, um, uh, technologies for developing uh, quantum, hard quantum computing hardware uh, based on various platforms uh, have been uh, 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 developed. I mean, they are uh, uh, being developed. And uh, uh, so the various platforms include uh, superconducting circuits, ion traps, uh, photons, neutral atoms, and uh, semiconductors, and so on. And remarkable uh, progress has been made in each of these uh, uh, platforms. Uh, however, still there is uh, big technical challenges for uh, increasing the number of qubits, physical qubits, by uh, several orders of magnitude. And uh, um, a promising solution for realizing such a, a large-scale quantum computing is a, a modular approach or the distributed uh, quantum computing. So in the, in the uh, distributed quantum computing, uh, one uh, constructs many uh, small-scale quantum computers, uh, which you may call a quantum processing unit, QPUs, and connect all of them together uh, to form a quantum network. Then the whole network functions as a large-scale quantum computer. And if uh, one considers to implement a distrib distributed quantum computing uh, by using uh, superconducting circuits or some uh, other uh, solid state uh, based uh, platforms, then uh, that big technical challenge is that the connection cables, which connects uh, units together, uh, has to be cooled down because it carries the microwave photons and you need to uh, keep the temperature uh, at the millikelvin level to keep the quantum nature of microwave photons uh, in, in the connection channel. So that's a big technical challenge. And for ion traps and neutral atoms, uh, they can be interfaced uh, directly to the optical photons, which can be transmitted in the room temperature environment uh, without uh, losing its quantum nature. So that's uh, uh, much more straightforward. However, there are still technical challenges for, for uh, these platforms for achieving uh, high efficiency for uh, connection. And uh, uh, we believe that cavity QED is advantageous in that respect. So cavity QED is a hybrid system of atoms and photons. And uh, it's an ideal platform, uh, ideal interface between uh, optical uh, qubit, I mean photonic qubit and atomic qubit for distributed quantum computing. And recently, uh, important building blocks for quantum computers based on cavity QED, uh, such as single photon sources and uh, various uh, quantum gates, have been demonstrated uh, by using uh, free space of uh, fabry pirot cavities. And also, uh, theoretically, it has been long uh, proposed that by placing uh, many atoms in one cavity with each atom strongly, strongly coupled to this cavity, and by 
individually addressing each of these atoms, then the system, the cavity QED system, functions as a quantum computer by itself. However, these uh, requirements that uh, I underlined here, the placing many atoms in one cavity with each atom strongly coupled to the cavity, and at the same time individually uh, addressing each of them, is really uh, very difficult to achieve with conventional uh, free space cavities. Uh, furthermore, by connecting multiple cavity QD systems with low losses, then in principle distrib distributed quantum computing uh, can be realized. But once again, connecting multiple cavities with low losses is uh, difficult to achieve technically uh, with uh, conventional uh, free space uh, cavities. In our project, uh, we aim to develop a quantum computing hardware based on a, a novel type of cavity QD system, which is a non-fiber cavity QD system uh, that overcomes the technical difficulties that conventional uh, fabric, free space fabric prototype cavities have. So the system, the optical non-fiber cavity, uh, is an old fiber cavity, so it's an old fiber cavity QD system, and it can contain uh, many atoms in one cavity, and at the same time, uh, uh, one can uh, connect many of these cavities uh, very efficiently with uh, optical fibers. So with this hardware, uh, we expect that uh, large-scale distributed quantum computing uh, can be realized. So um, in our scheme, um, each unit or each cavity contains uh, many atoms like this. So an array of atoms, one-dimensional array of atoms are placed along the nanofiber like this, and each of these atoms can be addressed individually. And uh, in, for uh, one of the main uh, schemes we are considering now is to utilize a lambda time uh, three-level atom. And uh, one of the two transitions in lambda type three-level atom is coupled to the cavity. And we attribute the uh, two stable ground state uh, to the computational basis so the uh, zero and one for the qubit. Then uh, one qubit gate for the system, uh, um, it's, it can be realized in a similar way uh, or same way as other uh, neutral atom ion trap uh, schemes. So for example, uh, one can drive the two photon Raman transition in the lambda uh, type a uh, three level atom, or you can also drive the transition, transition between zero and one directly with the microwave uh, field. For the uh, two qubit gates and also the n qubit gates, which is the extension of the two qubit gates, um, various schemes uh, have been theoretically proposed uh, for the uh, cavity QD based uh, quantum gates. So here I show you two examples. The first one is the uh, so-called duan kimberg scheme, where uh, one applies a wave packet of single photon to the cavity QD system. And by the way, this uh, single photon can be uh, um, deterministically generated by the use of a single atom uh, cavity QD system. Uh, by doing so, uh, two qubit gate, uh, control Z gate, or uh, uh, control phase flip gate, uh, can be applied uh, to various combinations of the qubit, like uh, atom photon gate or atom atom gate inside one cavity, so which is a local uh, atom atom gate, or atom atom gate between two distant atoms which are placed in different cavities over some distance. So it's a remote atom atom gate, and also photon photon gate. Um, another example would be a dispersive scheme where one drives a pair of atoms with uh, uh, um, a classical field and then 
through the uh, vacuum strap uh, process, um, atom uh, exchange the cavity photon and result in the atom atom interaction. So anyway, by combination of these uh, two qubit gates and one qubit gate, uh, the cavity QD system with multiple atoms inside the cavity functions as uh, QPU. And also by the use of the remote atom-atom gate in the duan kimball scheme, one can uh, implement a distributed uh, quantum computer uh, efficiently with the nanofiber cavity QD system. So uh, toward our goal of developing large-scale distributed quantum computing based on the nanofiber cavity, we have been uh, developing technologies required for that. So for the rest of this talk, I'd like to uh, show you the, uh, our technologies that we've uh, developed uh, uh, so far uh, before and after starting this uh, project uh, last uh, November. So the core of our uh, technologies is the nanofiber cavity QED system. So the cavity is uh, made of a, a single piece of fiber. So it's, it's uh, just a piece of fiber. But the, at the central part, the fiber diameter is less than the uh, wavelength of light. Uh, so this is the SEM picture of the nanofiber part. And the typical diameter is like 400 or 500 nanometers. So that's, the, uh, that's why we call it nanofiber. So it's on the order of 100 nanometers. And this nanofiber part is seamlessly connected to uh, standard single model optical fibers on both ends uh, through this tapered region. And in this uh, standard single model optical fiber part, we inscribe fiber bra gratings, a pair of fiber bra gratings, which function as mirrors inscribed inside the uh, optical fiber. So this forms uh, a fiber inline uh, fabric pro cavity. And then at the nanofiber part, um, light is guided as the uh, total internal reflection from the nanofiber, uh, the re uh, refractive index difference between the nanofiber and the surrounding vacuum. So the nanofiber itself functions as the core of the fiber, and the surrounding vacuum functions as the cladding of the uh, fiber. And because the diameter of this nanofiber is so small, and because the uh, refractive index difference between the core and the clad cladding, meaning nanofiber and the surrounding vacuum is so large, uh, the guided mode at the nanofiber has a strong evanescent field. So by placing a laser-cooled and trapped atom inside this evanescent field of the nanofiber, one can realize a very efficient interaction between the fiber-guided mode photon and, uh, and the atom. In uh, early experiments we've uh, done, uh, we utilized uh, evanescent field of the gui nanofiber-guided mode again, uh, also to trap single atoms near the nanofiber surface. So by injecting uh, blue detune light and red detune light. So uh, blue detune light has a uh, shorter wavelength than the atomic resonance, uh, and it creates a, a repulsive force, uh, applies repulsive force to the atom in the evanescent field. And red detune light uh, applies the uh, uh, attractive force. So by the combination of these uh, repulsive and attractive force, uh, a potential minimum um, with the distance of typically 100 to 200 nanometers away from the nanofiber surface is created. So atoms can be trapped in this potential minimum, which is inside the evanescent field of the uh, cavity uh, field. So in the initial experiment, uh, we constructed a, a very simple chamber uh, and we place the uh, uh, nanofiber cavity in this uh, um, uh, glass dome. So here, the nanofiber is uh, held in vertically, uh, vertical direction with this uh, uh, U-shaped aluminum jig. 
And uh, uh, the nanofiber cavity at this point, at this, uh, in this uh, initial experiment, has a moderate finesse of only uh, 30, but still, uh, by trapping an atom inside the evanescent field, uh, we could clearly observe the vacuum rabbit splitting, and we confirmed that the system is indeed in the strong coupling regime, and also the atom is trapped with a finite lifetime of uh, 11 uh, milliseconds in this case. In the uh, succeeding experiments, we constructed another chamber, another cavity, and uh, we, so we have now uh, two nanofiber cavity QD systems, each of which contains an ensemble of atoms, and we connect them together just by splicing a piece of fiber. So this is the uh, picture of the optical uh, table. Here we have first chamber, here we have another chamber, and then they are connected with, with a, a single piece of fiber. So two cavity QD systems are connected by just a piece of fiber with very low loss. The loss of this connection channel is dominated by just a, a splicing loss of uh, only like 1% uh, or so. so. And because the connection is so uh, made so, uh, with, with so low loss, uh, the two cavity QD systems are coherently coupled in these settings. And because of that, um, an interesting physics uh, we can uh, investigate in, in this system is that uh, uh, the whole system uh, forms the uh, new normal modes of, uh, so the whole system can be regarded as a coupled cavities uh, QED system. And uh, well, it's analogous to a classical uh, coupled oscillators with five oscillators. So in our case, we have two atomic ensembles and two cavities, and also we have the connection channel between the two cavities. So we have five oscillators. So the system have uh, five normal modes, which can be uh, grouped into three groups, uh, bright modes, fiber dark modes, and cavity dark mode. And we have observed all of these uh, normal modes of the coupled cavities QED system. Uh, in the initial setting, we uh, measure the transmission spectrum of the whole system, and we observe bright mode and uh, fiber dark modes. In the second setting, we place the uh, uh, asymmetric fiber beam splitter as a tapping port uh, to drive and detect the photon inside this uh, connection channel. And by doing so, we observe the cavity dark mode. So um, the fact that we have observed all these normal modes of the coupled cavity QZ system uh, is the proof that uh, photons can go back and forth between two cavity QD systems many times before it's being lost by the uh, loss, which means that in principle, we should be able to connect uh, multiple cavity QD systems in series like this to form, uh, uh, to realize uh, distributed uh, quantum computers. And toward that, uh, we have, uh, we still have a, uh, an, an issue. Uh, so in, in this uh, uh, early experiments, uh, we trapped an ensemble atoms in the evanescent field of the nanofiber, and we did that by uh, using the standing wave of the uh, uh, evanescent field, I, I mean the guided mode of the nanofiber. So atoms are trapped uh, as a single atom array indeed. However, the spacing between the atoms is very small and it's not resolvable with free space optics from the outside. So it is very, very difficult to uh, realize uh, individual addressing of each atom. So now we are uh, currently developing a new trapping scheme uh, based on optical tweezers. Uh, so as uh, Professor Omori has just uh, given us a nice talk on his uh, uh, project, um, and we'll have uh, uh, two uh, uh, invited lectures from uh, uh, later in this uh, session. Um, uh, but uh, um, so single atoms in free space uh, can be uh, individually trapped and manipulated 
uh, with, uh, an, with an array of small, uh, tightly focused uh, uh, trap uh, beams. And we are trying to apply this technique uh, to the nanofiber cavity QD system. So we are trying to uh, create uh, an array of optical tweezer trap along the nanofiber surface by placing uh, side resolved imaging optics to the side of the nanofiber cavity uh, with a combination of it with a uh, spatial light modulator. And uh, by developing this uh, technology, the uh, cavity Q, nanofiber cavity QD system can uh, function as quantum processing unit. So this is the uh, QP prototype that we have been uh, constructing. So inside the vacuum chamber, we have the nanofiber cavity here, and we place a single aspheric lens with large numerical aperture to the side of the nanofiber. We have already succeeded in trapping single atom uh, in the optical tweezer, uh, which is coupled to the nanofiber cavity here. So we have uh, uh, observed the uh, resonance fluorescence image of single atom trapped here through this lens. And at the same time, uh, we have observed, successfully observed, uh, cavity enhanced resonance fluorescence from this single atom coupled to the cavity through the cavity. So we clearly see this bimodal distribution uh, of the photon flux from the cavity, which is a signature of single atom successfully uh, trapped. And we are now preparing to increase the number of trap, uh, potential, uh, trap spots uh, from one to roughly 10 by the use of uh, uh, spatial light modulators. In our project, uh, the theory team has been also studying theories for uh, building blocks of cavity QD based quantum computing. The first element is the uh, uh, deterministic single photon source. And the uh, uh, overall efficiency of generating single photon from the cavity is uh, given by uh, the product of extraction efficiency, which is the efficiency of extracting photon inside the, uh, from inside the cavity to the outside, and those uh, multiplied by the internal efficiency, which is the generation efficiency of single photon inside the cavity. And uh, uh, maximal uh, efficiency is given by uh, this equation, uh, inequality. And uh, here, C sub i is uh, the parameter called internal cooperativity, uh, which is the, basically the cooperativity parameter of cavity QD with the replacement of the uh, cavity decay rate with the internal cavity decay rate. Uh, this theory is for the adiabatic limit, long pulse limit, but we also extended this uh, to the uh, finite uh, pulse duration case. And uh, the conclusion is that the uh, bandwidth of the single photon source or the shortest pulse duration that can be achieved without sacrificing the generation efficiency is given by either uh, kappa over g squared for the case of the bad cavity regime and one over kappa for uh, strong coupling regime. And we are also investigating uh, quantum gates and the requirements for FTQC based on cavity QED. And uh, in short, the uh, FTQC threshold uh, can be characterized by the internal cooperativity again, and also the bandwidth of the gate can be uh, also um, uh, characterized by either G square over kappa or kappa depending on the parameter regimes. So it's the uh, uh, also, um, same result as the single foreign sources. So anyway, the internal cooperativity is the parameter that characterizes how good a cavity QD system is. And uh, actually this internal cooperativity is proportional uh, to the parameter uh, of only the cavity. So it's proportional to, inversely proportional to the uh, product of the intracavity loss and the mo uh, effective modal area at the position of the atom. And, and uh, if we compare nanofiber cavity with the conventional free space uh, cavities, the modal area at the position of the atom uh, is three orders of magnitude smaller. And for the intracavity loss, um, 
the uh, um, good free space cavities can have interior cavity loss of uh, on the order of 10 to the minus 6. And we are trying to uh, develop uh, fabrication technologies to uh, 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 have the very low loss nanofiber cavity, not as good as the free space cavities uh, yet, but now we are, uh, the, uh, with the technologies we've been developing so far, we project the uh, intracavity loss of uh, 10 to the minus three or even less. So the losses in the nanofiber cavity comes from two origins. One is at the taper region, the other is at the uh, FPGs. Uh, for fabrication of the low loss tapers, um, so we fabricate uh, tapers or nanofibers by uh, heating a small region of uh, uh, a standard optical fiber with a small uh, flame of uh, hydrogen. And we scan this small flame back and forth along the fiber as we pull both ends of the fiber. And by doing so, we uh, uh, um, uh, make the taper shape and uh, with, we can uh, fabricate um, an optimal shape of the taper which uh, realizes a very low loss with uh, very uh, high precision. And uh, uh, um, conventionally, um, the uh, standard way to evaluate the loss of the taper is just to measure the transmission through the fiber as, as one pulls that uh, fiber. But recently, we have uh, developed uh, a technique to precisely uh, evaluate the loss of the taper uh, uh, by, by means of uh, repetitive cavity ring down measurement during the pull of the fiber. And also, at the same time, we have developed a method of precisely measure, monitor the change of the nanofiber diameter uh, uh, as we pull the fiber. And this is the result. So this is the change of the cavity finesse as a function of fiber radius. Each point corresponds to the result from cavity ring down measurement. And from this, we uh, can ev um, evaluate the uh, taper loss uh, as a function of the nanofiber radius. And as you can see, uh, the uh, taper loss is as small as 0.03% uh, at the radius of the nanofiber of uh, 250 nanometers or larger, which is a typical nanofiber di di radius that we use for the cavity QED. For fabrication of low loss FPGs, uh, we uh, utilize a standard phase mask method where we use the DUV laser uh, uh, to uh, inscribe FPGs on the fiber. And the key to uh, fabricate inscribe uh, low loss FPGs is to use uh, uh, high quality face masks. So we fabricate face masks uh, by ourselves in the uh, clean room by uh, e-beam lithography. And here's the example of the uh, transmission spectrum for a uh, single FPG where we see a clear and narrow <coughs> dip of the stop band. And by inscribing a pair of FPGs on a, a single piece of fiber, we can make the fiber resonator. And from the cavity ring now measurement, we measure the line width or the cavity uh, photon lifetime. And from the measurement of the FSR, uh, we uh, obtain the cavity finesse of 12,000, and which corresponds to the uh, loss per FPG of 0.026% or even less. So by combining these uh, two uh, technologies, uh, we project uh, the round trip loss for a nanofiber cavity of 0.1% or less, uh, corresponding to the finesse of 6,000 or higher. And we estimate the cooperativity we can achieve uh, as, uh, as large as uh, 100 or even larger. Uh, there are other technologies being developed in the uh, project, like uh, increasing the nano number of qubits uh, trapped in one cavity. Uh, so in the POC unit that I showed you uh, just now, uh, the number of qubits is limited by the uh, limited uh, field of view of the imaging lens. So we are uh, developing a custom design 
uh, objective lens which has a large uh, field of view so that we can trap like 1,000 atoms on the, uh, along the nanofiber. And also we are trying to demonstrate the distributed quantum computing. I mean, the, the basic element is the uh, remote uh, gate between uh, distant atoms. So uh, this is the summary of this talk. And uh, uh, for the prospect, we will demonstrate proof of concept for nanofiber cavity QED based uh, quantum computing hardware. And we will develop uh, technologies for distributed quantum computing and also scaling up. And uh, quantum error question theory, and stable light source. And finally, we will promote the social implementation of our technologies. Thank you very much.